have a job. Now I'm off drugs. Now I'm married. Now I own a home. Now I got a nice apartment. Now I got a nice car. And we can get stuck in the now. There was a movie a little while back called Evan Almighty. Some of you might have saw it. With Steve Carell and Morgan Freeman was playing God. And, and he, was, he was, Stephen Carell, Steve Carell was, was supposed to be Noah. And he was supposed to build an ark. It was like a present day Noah situation. And he wasn't trying to hear that. But everywhere he would go, animals would show up and talk to him. They would come to his job. They would come to his house. They would, everywhere he would go, the animals was like, hey, buddy, when are we going to get on the program? And they see the calling of God upon his life, but he was stuck in the now. He had his career, he had his house, he had his job. But even the animals were trying to get him to come out of the now and be what God had told him that he was supposed to be. And all the animals began to come two by two. But, you know, I was reading the Bible uh, one day and I realized not all the, they didn't just want two of every animal. Some animals, they wanted five. They wanted, they asked for five chickens. They wanted two giraffes, two this, two that. But they wanted five chickens because they knew we was going to eat them up if we had just been two. Come on, somebody. Amen. They, they, they would have never made it to Georgia had it just been two chickens. God said, bring a couple of more chickens on the boat with you. But the thing is, here, even the animals recognized the plan and the purpose for God for his life, but he was stuck in the now. Now, the Bible here gives us a story about this woman with the issue of blood. And it tells us that there was something inside of her that caused her to be the way she was. On the outside, you couldn't see any problems, anything happening. But there was a problem on the inside that was affecting what she could do and where she could go on the outside. And many times when we come to God, amen, we got issues. Hello. Okay, I'm going to say that again, give the rest of y'all a chance to get in on that amen. (laughs) Many times, we come to God, we have inner issues. There we go, now we're talking, now I can move on. And those issues cause us to be the way we are. And the question this morning is, Are you comfortable living in your dysfunction? Are you comfortable living with those inner issues that's causing you to be the way you are? See, this lady got tired. The Bible says that she was in this condition for 12 years. She said, I'm not going into 13 the same way. I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to do whatever it takes in order to deal with this inner issue that's causing this dysfunction in her life. See, because if we are not careful, we can become comfortable huh, living with the dysfunction. Especially when most of the people around you are dysfunctional too. You don't even look so bad. Matter of fact, you don't even look at bad at all. Because we can always find somebody in the group worse than we are. But it's like the prophet Isaiah, he got to a place where he got a revelation of God. And when he got a revelation of God, he got a revelation of himself. And when he got a revelation of himself, he got a revelation of all the people around him. He said, I got to do something different. See, because it's easy to be comfortable where you are. Why do I say that? I say that because close to 2 million people that got out of Egypt got comfortable in the desert. They were comfortable with the pillar of fire, keeping them warm, 
the cloud, keeping the sun off of them, walking out in the morning and just picking up lunch and dinner and going back to the tent because the manna would come down from heaven. God would bring water out of a rock. But how many know when you've been in bondage for 400 years, you're going to be dysfunctional? Hello, somebody. And they were willing to live with that dysfunction. See, the question this morning is, are you comfortable living with the generational curse that's been upon your life and upon your family? Are you comfortable getting married and getting divorced and getting married and getting divorced and getting married and getting divorced divorced because you can't stay married because there's some inner issues? Are you comfortable going in and out of rehabs? Are you comfortable getting a job and getting fired and getting another job and getting fired and getting another job and getting fired because there's inner issues that's not allowing you to live a normal life? For 12 years you've been in program. You ran out, you went through all the programs in Chicago, so you came to Atlanta. You went to all the programs in New York. Matter of fact, they had a picture at the drug office with with a circle, with a line, amen, not letting you go into another program in that state, amen. They made you leave the state, and they brought you here to Atlanta, but you got to get to the place today where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know what? I'm going to do something today. I refuse to continue to live with this dysfunction in my life. Mm. Are you comfortable? Because even when you get somebody good, you sabotage that because of your dysfunction. If you got a good woman, you wouldn't even know what to do with her. Because for it to work, you got to be a good man. Now, that ain't going to work just having a good woman and you ain't a good man. It ain't going to work having a good man and you ain't a good woman. Because they, they ain't going to, they can't fix your dysfunctions. Can't nobody fix them dysfunctions but you. Because they're inner functions. How do we get stuck in the now? One way that we get stuck in the now is deception. We, we get stuck because the devil deceives us. And we, 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 we don't see ourselves the way we are. The devil, the Bible says, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And you can be saved and still have unbelief in areas of your life. Huh? Because when you get saved, the light don't come on and show you everything. Thank God for that. I thank God he didn't show me everything when I got saved. I would have ran back out of the church. I would have been like, he said, no, we're just going to work on this right now. We're going to show the light on this area of life right now. We'll get to that stuff, but right now, we've got a whole lifetime to work with that other stuff. But right now, this, this is what we got to do. But see, the problem is sometimes we don't like what we see, and the devil recognizes that, and he, he lies to us so we won't accept what's really there, and we're deceived that it's not there at all. But when you're deceived by the devil, you can cast him out. But the worst kind of deception, hear me now, the worst kind of deception is self-deception. Because you can't cast self out. You can cast the devil out. You you know, you can get him out, but you can't get self out. You can't cast self out, amen. You got to deal with self. You got to recognize yourself. But the biggest problem is not the deception of the devil, but it's being self-deceived. Telling ourselves that we're this way when we ain't. See, the Bible tells us that Eve was deceived by the serpent. Adam was stupid. I'm a man. I just had, you know, I can't I tell like it is. He wasn't deceived. 
Any Bible didn't say Adam was deceived. Eve was deceived. The devil came and deceived her. Oh, you need this fruit. Look how good it is. Oh, you ought to taste it. Oh, it's all good. Man, it's going to make you smart. You're going to be wise. All that. She got deceived. Oh, okay. And he's sitting there looking at her. He know better. He didn't get deceived. But, amen. Here we go. That's why when God showed up, he didn't say, hey, Eve, what, what, what is Adam. He didn't even say nothing to Eve right away because Eve was deceived. So he said he cut her a little slack because she was deceived. You stupid. Come here. (laughs) See, self-deception is worse than the devil deceiving you. Because, you know, I deal with people all the time and, and I try to get them there, but oh no, it's not like that. It's, okay, man, I just got to let you go and sit you on the shelf somewhere for a minute because I, I can't, get to, can't get through to you. And it ain't even the devil. If it was the devil had you see, had you tripping and thinking a certain way, I could pray for you and I could believe God and we cast them out and get a breakthrough. But I don't know how you're going to get a breakthrough from you. The Bible tells in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 16, it tells about one of the churches and how they thought they had it going on. And they had money and they had this and they had that. And, 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 and Jesus came to him. He says, you think you're rich, but you're really poor. You think you got it going on, but you're bankrupt. They were deceived to thinking because they had a little money and they had a little wealth and they had a little this, they had a that, that that meant they were spiritual. They don't got nothing to do with your spiritual life. You just might be good at managing money. You might just took a course in economics in school and you did good at it. They don't say nothing about where you are spiritually with God. Just because you got money. We'll see how spiritual you are when it's time to give some of it up. Yeah, that's what we're going to see how spiritual you really are. Oh, I'm blessed. Look, I got this. Okay, we're going to do this. What? The devil is a liar. No, that's. Why would the devil ask you for money to get some flyers? To pass out, to get people to leave his camp and come over to God's. You really deceived, self-deceived. We can't even rebuke the devil out of that one. See, that's one of the ways how we get stuck in the now. Because God has blessed us, and now we don't want to give nothing up. Now we think we okay. Now we think we just need to come to church one day a week. Now we don't think we need to be so involved like we used to. Now we think we know more than the people that taught us. So we get stuck in the now. Another way that we get stuck is going to the wrong people in the now. Now, look in this story. This woman was suffered 12 years, constant bleeding, couldn't find no cure, came behind Jesus, touched the his room, immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it. Peter said, Master, the whole crowd is pressing up against you. Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me. But I felt healing power go home from me. When the woman realized she could not stay here, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. And the whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. She explained what her life had been like. She explained here that how she had went to all these physicians for years and no one could help her. They could find no cure for 12 years. And as I was studying this, I learned something about the physicians during the time of Jesus. It was a little little bit different from today. They specialized more in preparing you to die than they did trying to heal you. It's why when even Jesus was at the house at Simon's house, 
Mary came in and she poured uh, the oil on him. And, and he said, she did this for the preparation of my burial. And many times in, in biblical times, they were focusing more. They didn't have the type of medicine we had today. So they was more like a, instead of a hospital, it was more like hospice. And they're like, well, oh, let's see what we can do. And get them ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so she went to these people whose main purpose was preparing people to die when she was trying to live. See, we get stuck in the now when we spend time with people preparing us to stay where we are or even go back further instead of with people preparing us to live. The Bible says, be careful what you hear. Oh, you don't need to do that. Oh, you don't do that. Oh, you fine. You straight. So the blind starts leading the blind. So for 12 years, she ran over to this group. And they just showed her, it was talking to her about how to die gracefully. She's thinking, I'm trying to live, amen. And I spent money to join up over here with you guys. And that's all y'all talking about, dying and how rough it is and how this is going to happen. Man, let me go over here. Let me try these people over here. Maybe I'll go over here. Man, man, here they go talking all about, I'm rough side of the mountain. And oh, I made it today. Glory to God. Man, I'm out of here. I ain't trying to hear all that. Let me run over here to these people. Man, I run over here to these people. They want to smoke crack. Man, let me get out. Let me run over here to these people. They talking about going back to the club, going back to Egypt. Man, I, for 12 years, she spent all her money running the people that was try, pr- trying to prepare her to die when she was trying to live. She said, I ain't trying to spend the rest of my life in the now. I ain't trying to go to heaven from the state I'm in. I, this, the devil is a liar. You might want to stay there. You might want to live there. They, it was such a common thing. Death was such a big deal. They even had professional mourners. If you didn't have enough friends to make it look like you were somebody, you could hire mourners to come and, woo, you know, but make sure we get the repass. Where's the repass at? We're going to get the chicken. She said, I am not going out like that. This might be my now, but it's not going to be my future. The Bible said there was a lame man in the book of Acts chapter 3. There was a lame man at the gate, beautiful. And Peter and John came up to them. And he began to ask them for honor. They began to look at him. And the question is today that you have to ask yourself, and maybe you have to ask about the people that you hang out with and that you live in your life. What happens to people when you show up? Do they get better? Are people better off with you in their life? Are they encouraged? You know, are they, are, are, do they feel, you know, encouraged after leaving your presence? Amen. Do they feel like, getting up and doing something and and coming to church. That's what happened when Peter and John met this man. Amen. They didn't surround themselves with just people that wanted to prepare them to die. But that day they got around two men that wanted to help them live. See, you got to have a strong desire to get to Jesus. So this woman say, she said, now is my chance. Now is the opportunity for me to make a difference. See, she was considered unclean. She couldn't even go to church. She couldn't even go in the temple. But she said, that ain't going to keep me from going to Jesus. Hello. She said, this is my situation. This inner issue I got might stop me from letting me in the church, but it ain't going to stop me from getting to Jesus. She had a determination. She said, I'm going to catch him before he get in the door because they may not let me in the door. That's why I thank God for this ministry because it let me in the door. It let me get in and come to see Jesus. It told me that I didn't have to live in my now, that I could be somebody in Jesus. See, there's these things going on. And we got to make a decision, are we going to live with them? 
Are we going to become who God called us to be? The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, there was a man by the name of Legion. Because he was full of demons. He was full of devils. Because Jesus approached him, he says, who are he said, we are Legion because we're many. We're so many. If we just told you all our names, we'd be here all day. So just call us Legion. And the Bible says that they tried to bind him with chains, and he would break the chains. And they would put fetters on him, and he would break the fetters. And he lived running in and out of the tombs. He lived in the graveyard. And the Bible says that he began to even cut himself. He was in a messed up spot. How many know he had some inner issues? That he didn't have that nobody else had to do nothing to him. But he was doing it to himself. But one thing about him, we, we today we say, man, he crazy. That man crazy. He cutting himself. He living in a graveyard. But one day Jesus came by that graveyard. I remember mean, a story of a, I heard a long time ago about it was a cemetery near these two guys. They was roommates at the house. They were both crippled. One of them had a bad leg, and one of them had a hunchback. So the one with the bad leg, he said, I'm going to make a shortcut through the cemetery going home. He gets there, the devil jumps up. Ah. He said, give me your money. He said, I ain't got no money. Give me your watch. He said, I ain't got no watch. What do you got? He said, I ain't got nothing but this bad leg. He said, okay. So he, took, he came home walking straight. His buddy said, Man, what, what, what happened? He said, man, I went through the cemetery, man, the jump, devil jumped up, told me this, given that. So they're like, what? He said, no, I don't believe that. So he had bad eyes. So they had another friend heard the story. He said, man, I'm going to go if he ain't going to go. Cause he's hunchback. So he goes to the cemetery, boom, devil jumps out. Give me your money. I ain't got no money. Give me your watch. I ain't got no watch. What do you got? He said, I just got this hump on my back. Dude, come out of there walking straight. <laughs> I was roommate with a bad eye. I was like, wait a minute, I'm going to try that. So the next day he goes through there. Devil jumps up. Give me your money. He said, I ain't got no money. Give me your watch. He said, I ain't got no watch. He said, well, you won't mind having this leg and this hump then. <laughs> so he went on. <laughs> you need to be in the cemetery where Jesus passes by. Not where the devil hangs out. Jesus went by this cemetery. And even though this man had all these inner issues, he didn't have a little issue like this lady. He had a whole bunch of them. But when Jesus came by, even though he had all these inner dysfunctions going on in his life, it didn't stop him from worshiping Jesus. See, that's why the trick, that's why some of you are stuck in the now. Because you're sitting here waiting for things to get better. You're there waiting for God to do this for you. And you're waiting for God to do that for you. But you got to learn to worship and praise God right now, even though you got these issues, even though all these things is happening in your life. Amen. You got to learn how to worship God in advance. Can somebody say amen? Because you know that he's going to do it. It is no sign that it's been done. Amen. But you got to believe God that he is able. This man didn't let his situation stop him. He didn't let the fact that he was full of devils. He was full of demons, amen, and nobody couldn't even hang around him. He said, because Jesus came by, and he said, I'm going to worship the Lord. The Bible said he fell at his feet, and some of you right now, God was trying to give you a breakthrough through the worship this morning, amen, but you're waiting for a word, and God said, I ain't going to do it through the word. I was going to do it through the worship, amen, but you want to pick and choose how I deliver you. You want to pick and choose how I move. You miss me. You thought you was going to get it in the word when you were supposed to get it into worship. He said, I'm crazy. I got devils all in me. They just, it's so many of them. It was a whole lot of them. Because they said, 
Jesus, if you're going to cast us out, can we go into the pigs? The Bible said there's about 2,000. And they ran in the water, just drowned themselves. They got more sense than some of us. They said, I ain't living in the now. I'm going to, I ain't, uh, this ain't, uh, I ain't staying like this. I don't care what I got to do. I ain't staying like this. Because they, they wanted to, they said, Jesus, let us stay in the region. Because, I mean, no, the devil, he's got a kingdom. The Bible says he's got a kingdom. The principalities, powers, rules of dark places, you know. Look at, look at our city. If you look around the city, you drive from one area to the next, there's a whole different spirit. Hello. You drive around here, it's prostitution, drugs. People want to knock you upside the head. That's spirit right outside these doors. Huh? You go in the, you drive through Midtown, you might get a cavity just driving through there. It'd be so sweet coming through there. Amen. I, I, I just say it like that. Amen. So then you, You go to Buckhead, they think they got it all together because they got a little bit of money. They got things going. You, there's different spirits. You go to Little Five Point, you might see anything. You see how the devil in different areas, all of a sudden, you start, you walk, drive over there, you start feeling like this, don't know where it came from. Because he said, cast us out, but let us stay in the area. He said, okay, cast us out of the man, but can we stay in the area? And see, sometimes God casts some things out of you in the now, and then tomorrow you go right back to that area, and they don't realize they're still hanging out in that area. And you're talking about, I don't know what happened. I know what happened. Now that you got delivered, now you went right back over there, because now you thought you were strong enough to deal with that stuff. And now you're in bondage again. You're a POW. Prisoner of war, we got to come find you. Do a drive, I just snatch you up, throw you in the van, amen. Are you AWOL? Absent while I leave, no accountability. You've been gone seven days, now you want to come back and tell us where you was. That ain't being accountable. Because he's going to leave out of you, but he ain't going far. That's his area. That's his domain. See, are you letting your dysfunction stop you from praising? Stop you from worshiping? Huh? I don't care. You had to crawl in here. You better worship him. You better give God glory. You used to, but now you can get your hair done at an actual shop. I don't want to mess up my hair. I don't. You know, now you got a suit with a pants actually the same color as a coat. <laughs> now you don't want to, you think that, you know, standing up there like a board is being spiritual. And that's why you're stuck in the now. Some people get stuck in the now because they don't realize the best is yet to come. <laughs> The best is yet to come. Jesus told his disciples in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, in my father's house. Huh? In my father's house is off the hook. And I go to prepare a place for you in his house. Do you think that the place he's preparing is better than where you stand? Do you think your little apartment is better than what heaven has set up for you? Huh? The Bible says we're predestined. Huh? That pre means that nothing is being done even before we get there. Huh? How many of you went to pre-K? Huh? That's before you get to K. Amen. They put you in pre-K. But because you're in pre-K, guess what? That means you're going to K. There's something better than where you at. Amen. And God predestined you. You have a destiny in Jesus. And the destiny you have in Jesus is not where you at today. 
The Bible says that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, has not entered the mind of man the things that God has planned for those that love him. And you got to understand today, this ain't where it's at. This ain't the final resting place. Amen. This is just one stop on the trip. Amen. But the Bible says from glory to glory. The Bible tells me that he that began a good work in me would perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And since Jesus ain't came back yet, I know that there's something God has for me to do. I know there's more that God wants me to experience, so I refuse to get stuck in the now. Don't get stuck in the now. And where you, I mean, talking spiritually. Well, you ain't stuck in the now when it comes to clothes. Soon as some new stuff come out, you shoot. The now. But just before it even come out, you already got the bootleg version. <laughs> and be bragging, this is a good one though. <laughs> we were predestined. Romans 8.29 says it was done in advance based on where we're going to get to. And we want, to get, we want to get stuck in the now. God says, now is not forever. It's for now. See, we have spiritual experiences, and that is, that's something that gets us stuck in the now. Peter and James and John on the Mount Transfiguration. Wow, there's Moses, there's Elisha, Jesus. Look at Jesus. He was changed, man. He was transformed. They would have talked in fellowship. And wow, this is deep. What happened? All of a sudden, Peter wanted to build some tabernacles, some churches, and just live there the rest of his life. He was almost stuck in the now. As soon as he started talking like that thing, like that, all of a sudden everything vanished. God said, Peter, just that's my son. Listen to him. Do we got, what if he had got stuck in the now? Who would have preached at Pentecost? What would have happened to the lame man at the gate beautiful if he had got stuck in the now? See, there are people that God wants you to impact their lives. There are people that need to hear your testimony. There are people that need to know that God was able to deliver you from your inner function, dysfunctional issues so they can believe that God can change their life and raise them up. And there you are. You want to get stuck in the now because you blessed today, man. You know, you got your little wife. You got your little husband. You got your little two, two and a half kids. That's what they say to everybody. The average is two and a half. So I guess you all had to share one on every other week or something. I don't know how that works. You got a credit card. Mm -hmm. You got shoes from the mall. You can go out to eat on the weekends because before you thought going out to dinner was going to McDonald's. And we get stuck in the now. See, my mindset is this. If God could take us from three people 17, 18 years ago to where we are today, where can he take us in another 17, 18 years? But it could get easy to get stuck in the now. We got nice fluffy chairs. We got carpet. Got this, got that going on, this, well, oh. God didn't do this for us. He did it for the people that he wants us to reach. He's doing it for them. This lady says, I refuse. See, you got to have a strong desire because it's easy to stay in the now. Even when, it, even when, it, when you're having a hard time. Because, see, even when you have all these dysfunctions, one thing about it, you still know how things are going to kind of work out, being the way you are. You already got a history. You kind of know, well, 
if I just stay the way I am and keep doing the way I am, I kind of know the way things are going to pan out. This is how it usually happens. I get on a four or five year run, do good, and then blam. Okay, I kind of know that. But to give that up, mm, for what I don't know. But whatever it is, it's going to be better than what you're doing. See, when, when you give something to God, he never gives it back the way you gave it to him. You give him your life. 20-something years ago, I gave him my life. The life I got today ain't nothing like the life I gave him. The life I gave him was with clothes on my back, with cardboard in the bottom of my shoes, and pants with no pockets, because I've been smoking crack, and I kept thinking I had money when I knew I didn't, kept looking for money to the point I didn't even have no more pockets. That's the life I gave him. That's what I gave him. He didn't give me that back, amen. Today, I'm a man of dignity. I'm a a man of respect. I'm a man of God. I get to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got the best job that the world has to offer, amen. I am a... I love my life. Today I can go to the movies. Today I can go play golf, amen. Today I can get on a boat and I can get in a car. Today I can hold a job, amen. The life that I turned in is nothing like the life I got back. You get stuck in the now. You got to take a desire. Paul said, I press toward the mark. Huh? I pressed toward the mark. He said, I ain't obtained yet. Well, I've, I've obtained a lot of things, but hey, this ain't over. The, it, the deal ain't over. He knew his life was almost at the end when he's writing Timothy. He said, man, I've been poured out like a drink offering. I've got just a little bit left in my cup. But he's still, Timothy, but bring my books. Maybe I might get to preach one more time. I'm going to be ready, though. Get to minister one more time. And Bible tradition says that as Paul was being led away to be executed, he was witnessing to the soldier that was taken to be executed and won him to the Lord. He said, now I'm finna die, but you finna live before I die. So you have to push. Look at the effort she had to do to get out of the now. The Bible said there was a crowd. There was a multitude of people. And she knew the Jews realized that the, 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 the Jewish, the robes they would wear at the bottom, they had tassels. And they had 600 and something tassels, and each tassel represented one of the laws. And they knew the power of God was in the word. That's why she didn't try to touch him on the shoulder. She said, I need to get to the fringe with a what a word is. Because there's power in the word. I don't need to just walk up and touch one back here. No, I need to get what a power is. And people might look at me like I'm stupid. People might look at me like I'm crazy. People might laugh at me and, and all of that. But she said, I got to get to where the power is. She said, I don't care. People been looking at me crazy for the last 12 years anyway. So at least look at me crazy for doing something right. Didn't do something wrong. Before, a lot of us didn't care what we were doing, how we looked. Amen. We was on the dance floor doing stuff that wasn't even a dance. I read a thing not too long ago on Facebook, and it, was, it said it had a lady's picture. She said she was so drunk last night, when she walked across the dance floor to get another drink, she won the dance contest. <laughs> 